Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the last video, we talked about the characteristics of enterococci. Today, we'll learn how to diagnose it and how to manage it. And now, let's get started. This is my microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. Please watch these videos in order. To review, enterococci are gram-positive cocci that are catalase-negative, gamma-hemolytic. Yes, they can grow in 6.5% salt solution. Yes, they can grow in bile. And they are PYR-positive. Enterococcus literally mean the spherical bacteria that live in your intestine, i.e. colon. As we've discussed in the last video, enterococci can survive bile, salt, and a wide range of temperature changes and pH changes. That's why it can survive in the colon and the urinary tract. Do you remember Streptococcus pneumoniae? It was gram-positive cocci arranged in pairs or short chains that was catalase negative. Similarly, enterococci are gram-positive cocci arranged in pairs or short chains, also catalase negative. Remember this because when we talk about lab diagnosis of enterococci, one of the most important skills is to know how to differentiate between pneumococci and enterococci. Diseases caused by enterococci include urinary tract infections, peritonitis, endocarditis that can lead to persistent bacteremia. Enterococci is gram-positive, here's the angel, it can grow in salt, it can grow in bile, it's part of the normal flora of your colon. Diseases include urinary tract infections, subacute endocarditis, many of them are resistant to penicillin, and vancomycin. Remember how we diagnosed Streptococcus pyogenes? Yeah, I remember that. It was PYR positive, it was beta hemolytic, and it had the M protein. Do you remember Streptococcus pneumonia? Yeah, gram positive cocci in pairs or short chains. It was alpha hemolytic, sensitive to uptoken and sensitive to bile, i.e. bile will kill it within minutes. That's why Streptococcus pneumoniae cannot survive in your intestines. Now, today's topic, enterococcus, how can we diagnose it microscopically? Very similar to Streptococcus pneumoniae. But listen carefully, here are the differences between the two. Streptococcus pneumoniae was sensitive to bile, but enterococcus is resistant to bile, i.e. it can survive bile. Streptococcus pneumoniae is uptoken sensitive, but, but enterococcus is uptoken resistant, just like the viridans. But here's the thing, Streptococcus pneumoniae, PYR negative. Streptococcus viridans, PYR negative, but enterococcus is PYR positive. So here are the only two gram-positive catalase negative organisms that are PYR positive. Number one, Streptococcus pyogenes. Number two, enterococci. All the other Streptococci are PYR negative. What else? You can culture enterococci on blood agar or chocolate agar, non-selective. Enterococci can grow and multiply in a variety of conditions. More acidic, more basic, I don't care. More bile, less bile, I don't care. More salt, less salt, I don't care. High temperature, low temperature, I will survive it. That's why it's non-selective. Can I use some nucleic acid amplification test? Yes, indeed, and it can help you differentiate between different subtypes of enterococci, including the difference between enterococcus faecalis and enterococcus facium. Identification. Biochemically speaking, we use the uptoken test and the bile solubility test. Management. How can we manage enterococci? It is complicated, but here's the most basic idea. You need to combine two drugs. The first one is cell wall synthesis inhibitor. Anyone? No, you cannot use cephalosporins, for example, because cephalosporins, as you know, are lame. They cannot cover E, enterococci, so I will not use any cephalosporin. How about the penicillins? Well, the one that might work is ampicillin, with some of them, not all of them. Vancomycin can work, but increasingly many of them are vancomycin-resistant enterococci. So the classic is to pick one of these, plus 
and aminoglycosides such as gentamicin. Will this work against all of the enterococci? Shut up. It works against some of them, not all of them. But hey, medicosis, what if my enterococcus is resistant to this group or to this group? What should I do? Use just one of them that will cover the specific bacteria plus some of the newer options such as linizolid, deptomycin, tiger cyclin, which is a tetracycline, and quinopristin, delphopristin. Here is some integration with cardiology and with infectious diseases in internal medicine. How can we treat endocarditis? If you remember, it was ampicillin plus gentamicin intravenously. Does anyone remember that? Yes, indeed, because enterococcus. If you want to learn more about penicillins, cephalosporins, vancomycin, etc., check out my antibiotics course on my website medicosisperfectsnetis.com. I also have a new surgery high yields course and another one for emergency medicine high yields. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.